Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I, I, I thank the Lord for His Word. I thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in our lives in fulfilling the dream that the Father had from the very beginning when He chose us in Himself that we would become a living expression, hallelujah, to take that invisible spirit and manifest it in all of His creation. It was the Father's intention from the beginning. And though it may seem like uh, God had to send a Savior in the context because of Adam falling, we understand that God had incorporated it in the plan all along so that you and I could fulfill His dream to become the reality of what He is after. And I really do believe this. Uh, I, I really have my heart and my mind uh, set on these things in, in these days that we uh, live in. It's not that it's anything new or anything old. It's just the realm of God's Spirit that He is still fulfilling His Word. It's, it's the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ in His body. He has already atoned for everything in our lives, and now you and I must apprehend that atonement and bring it to a full manifestation, a full expression, not just in our intellect realm, but into a truly visible manifestation of who God is. And so turn with me. I just, I, 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 I have so many different things. I know I would like to go back, and I'm not going to take any time tonight. Like, let's not look for Jesus in the graveyard. Let's look for Him where He has seated us with Him. And this is exactly why, like we just sang that song. I love that song, King Jehovah Reigns. Like, like a lot of folks have to understand the reason there was two. One is taken, one is left. Uh, and the reason is, is God is looking for a people who will hang on to their seat. It really is the Rosa Park picture that she was not willing to give up her seat at any cost. Like you and I can't comprehend this, but I guarantee you, she crossed the line of no longer being afraid whether she lost her life or not. Yeah. And God is after a people to express that they love not their suke, their lives unto death. And coming into the Feast of Tabernacles, we've heard the trumpets blowing, but the Day of Atonement is a day of His increasing and our decreasing. It's a stripping away that no matter what you or I think, it's no longer acceptable. This is why it was written in the Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways. And He shall do what? Direct your path. He only has one path for us. I would like to go there and I'm not even going to spend too much time. But look, it isn't back to an old empty grave. He looks from the throne room. He looks out from the innermost place. The most holy place. This is where He functions and operates from. He moves from that dimension, no other dimension. He's no longer looking just like, like He'll work with us in Passover in the first day and the second day. But what God is literally doing in our lives is He is causing you and I 
to decrease. And as I've been thinking about that, you know, I went back to a, to a, a thought that I have that I've, I've talked about, and it was so, so, uh, it's so true, it's so strong. So turn with me to Psalms 51, and I just want to read it. Let's just read it. Psalms 51. I, I, don't, I don't even know where to begin. Let's just jump right down to verse 9. It says, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. He did that. He literally did that. Doesn't matter what I see. Doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what I feel. He did that. All he asked you and I to do was to saddle up and be harnessed to him. Be one with him. Walk with him. And he will do the rest. Solomon toiled and toiled and toiled in all that he could do, but he never could perfect or be perfect what God had desired. Even in all the imagery that he has pasted across time, he could never fulfill what the Lord Jesus did. And yet Jesus himself said, look, look at those lilies. Their glory is greater than Solomon's because Solomon toiled, but they toiled not. You and I cannot toil the sweat of human to enter in. Our labor is rest, trust, belief, reckoning the old man dead, changing the way we think. Do you realize, like Rosa Parks, think about this, she wouldn't give up her seat. You and I could never become a butterfly if we escape from the cocoon early. Well, they still went to church. They still love Jesus. Yeah, but we're not talking about in the first day or second day any longer. We're talking about in the third day where he literally will say, did I know you? Do I know you? Well, we did. I understand that. But do you, e do, e do, I do. Did you become? Verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. He did. There has been a fulfillment to the prophetic cry of David, understanding that his shortcomings, doing things that he never thought he would do. Cast me not away from thy presence. This is the verse I really wanted to get to. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not the Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Spirit, soul, and body. And uphold me with thy free spirit. Verse 11. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost from me. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now, I know I walked down this path for the last few years, literally always saying to the Lord, Lord, the only way I can ever change is the Holy Ghost. Like, seriously, earthquakes, volcanoes, sicknesses, diseases, and death, and poverty, and all the kinds of things, pestilence, wars, rumors of wars, and, you know, losing your job, getting rich, all these kind of things. None of these things will ever change us into what God has determined. He works through them. He uses them. He works all things together for good. But it is the work of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, 
This is exactly why Jesus said this, right? Tell, tell me I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Like this we said, it's better that I go. It's better for you. See, Paul even understood it's better for me to stay for you. But Jesus said, it's better for me to go. Do you know why Paul said that it's better for me to stay? That he understood that they weren't mature enough, that they still needed someone to keep them in order because they weren't familiar with the Holy Ghost enough. That they needed someone to filter their lives, to keep them in check. When all along God has wanted the Holy Ghost to be the very living source within our lives. You'll teach no more every man his neighbor saying, Know the Lord, Genosco, for they shall all I do know me. Another dimension, another level, that you won't need a law or a person. Instead of needing those things, you will come into that place that He has prepared where that you can walk in unison with the Father as a Son performing the only thing God ever desired was just being Him in plain sight. The Holy Ghost. Don't take it from me. Don't take your presence from me. But look at what Paul said here in verse 19. Now I have a question. If David cried and he said, don't take your presence from me, what did Jesus say? He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Oh my God, he just performed what David cried. And then he said this, he said, don't take the Holy Spirit from me, but listen to what Paul writes here, and let's read between the lines. He says, quench not the Spirit, because the Spirit can never be taken from us. All we can ever do is say, hush, Holy Ghost. And then justify our own actions based upon our position of what we see, hear, feel, touch, and discern. No, no. He fulfilled the word because God's only desire is to bring a people to them to himself. The only thing God is releasing you and I into, we hear it all the time in the first and second day mentality, God's releasing me, but he's only released us into one thing, and that is to be separated from ourselves and released into the fullness of his presence. And the first carnal question that will pop up in our mind is this. Well, how does that play out? Overthinking. Underestimating. Still looking to pick and choose. Eating from the tree of knowledge. Not the I do. Not the ego is how you really say it. No, but the one that still has man, human, wisdom and understanding operating and functioning. God is truly after a people who love not their lives unto death. I was reading today about Demas 
and how Paul said he left me for the world. You know what? If you really do a, a study on that, he didn't go back out into the heathen world. He just went to another dimension backwards in the church. And the reason was, was because he was afraid. It was getting hot. Yeah, Paul was about to die. He, and Demas wasn't the only one that left, right? And the only one that stayed was Luke, according to 2 Timothy. He was afraid to give up his life in this world. The only way that can happen is if you and I, to avoid that, the only way that can happen, avoidance of that situation in our lives, is to quench not what he has given us. It's pretty hard stuff. The Bible says this, not me, the Bible. The way of the transgressor is hard. But Jesus said this. He said, look, take my yoke upon you. For my burden is light. It's easy. We're moving into a time. We're transitioning. We have been transitioning where God is looking to strip away everything all the way. Look at this. He was made of no reputation. Philippians chapter 3, 1 through 14 is very clear that Paul said, I was this, but I count it all as nothing. I'm sad to say, I'm really sad to say, that most church folks think it's okay just to go do your thing. As long as you're going to church, as long as you still love Jesus. Well, didn't we love you? Didn't we do everything in your name? No, God is after an overcomer. We sang the song tonight, till the church, the soul realm of the church, takes her proper place. See, if everything that we think is okay was okay, we would be functioning in the way the Father has desired. But all along, the Father's only desired one thing, the Day of Atonement, not in an Old Testament concept, like the Old Testament concept, seriously. And we still try to mimic it when we have our fastings and all that. And I'm not saying it, but I'm telling you, one of the greatest fasts you can ever do is what Jesus said. He says, when you go into your closet, let God strip you. And when you come out, let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Wash your face and fast from the world. No, seriously. Quench not the Holy Ghost. He won't take it. He gave it. I'm just reading between the lines that now that we have it, Paul is saying to you and I, don't quench His spirit. Because when you think it's up, he might be going down. When you think it's in, he might be out. And the only way, look, look, I, I want to preach this message so bad. The, word, the, the I do, the word now. Look, when you, you know we talk about the, the supper, right? The last supper we call it. And it, listen, this is what the Bible says. You go read it. You, you check it out yourself. It says, and, when, and because Jesus knew it was time. He took off and he wrapped in cloth and he washed their feet. Do you see how that he knew? He, it wasn't just like, well, he's Jesus. Exactly. This is what he's trying to get you and I to be like. My dad used to say this all the time. The knower knows. We, 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 me, 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 me. We're like psych a little too much, right? Great perception. Some spirit, it's still mixed, but God is moving a people. Hallelujah. He's growing them up. And the way it works, seriously, is to stay focused and stay the course. 
Because everything that God is doing is contrary to the carnal mind. It's contrary. Contrary. And the only thing that God ever asked us to do, be in one accord. Go read the New Testament. Find out every time God moved, you'll find out he was in, we, the people were in one accord. They didn't separate themselves. Like you can come to the same building and be separate, right? You know that. They were assembled. They certainly weren't walking away. I, I do have an answer. What happens to those folks? Even those that, even those that where he says, I didn't know you. If you go to the book of Revelation, chapter 12, a man child or an overcomer is caught up. But the woman, those who refuse to be processed to the end. They have to go to the wilderness, a place that God has prepared. To do what? Finish the work. The mercy and grace of God to give opportunity to continue. But let's not be, let's not be, when he's chosen us and marked us, for the prize of the high calling. Remember this? I said it on Sunday or uh, uh, maybe last Wednesday. The end of the Lord or the Lord is the end. The reality is when he becomes Lord and King of everything in our lives, it's lights out. It's over for you and I. This is exactly what happened to Job. He had come to the end of himself. And the beginning of the fullness of God. You remember this? Like, we we read it. You can stand. Matthew 28, you know, but I think it was verse 1 or 2, where it says, at the end of the Sabbath, remember? Remember? At the end of the Sabbath? Well, what's at the end of the Sabbath? The beginning of resurrection life. It it actually talks about the new day was dawning, right? Yeah. Seven to eight, right? Seven and eight added together is the day of rest. Man's labors have ceased. Just like God. Rested new day if I didn't get anything across tonight I wanted to get this one thing he doesn't he won't take his presence from us he never leaves us or forsakes us and he's given us the Holy Ghost but he's also given you and I the responsibility not to quench the Holy Ghost We love you, Jesus. Take the word, manifest it, increase it in our lives. Let the glory of your name be exalted. For God, surely you are in this place. And you will perform all of your word. Hallelujah. Do you realize this? I'm, I'm a little beside myself right now. But listen, we love the story where Ruth went down to the threshing floor and at midnight, but I had this thought today, she could have never got to the threshing floor if she would have not listened to Boaz when he said, don't go in any other field. Well, that field over there looks just like Boaz's field. He's got nice workers over there too was never about the field. It's never been about the church. It's always been about where God put you. Look, remember this? They sang, they worshiped, and the prison doors were open. And he said, don't run away. Stay. Put, don't give up your seat. It was, look, don't get in the lifeboat. Cut the ropes. It's the only way to be saved. It has nothing to do with anything other than learning obedience by the things that you suffer. 
so that you can be one with Him. And everybody says, Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen and amen, baby. Hallelujah. Quench not the Holy Ghost.